The Creality Ender 3 as we know it has gone. Bring out your dead. It is in run out. You won't be able to buy it soon. There is a replacement, the Ender 3 V2. I'm John for the Hot End and today we're going to have a look at the new Ender 3 V2. Okay, the Ender 3. We reviewed the original Ender 3 or oh, more than a couple of years ago now and it has just been discontinued. There are a few around if you look hard enough, but it's been replaced by the Ender 3 V2. Now it had a couple of other tweaks along its life and then there was the Ender 3 Pro, but this is basically the Ender 3 with a couple of upgrades. The new Ender 3 V2 is the replacement for the entry level Ender printer. Now the original Ender 3, I would say without doubt in the last two years has been the biggest selling entry level 3D printer that there's been. If you check the forums and the Facebook and all the, the other things, websites, you'll find that the, the biggest topic is Ender 3. Okay, Ender 3 version 2. This is the picture straight from the website of the new version 2. And this is the list that they've put up of the various changes to the original Ender 3. Now this list is not complete. There were several others that aren't on this list. So I guess the best place to start is we'll go through the changes that you can see on the Ender 3 V2. On the outside, you'll notice that the power supply is gone. Uh, they've moved the power supply down to underneath the frame. You'll notice too that there's a new LCD screen. There's also a little parts drawer there's belt tensioners on the X and Y belts. There's huge leveling knobs on the bed. And while we're on the bed, you'll see it has a new glass print surface. It has a heavier frame in the Y axis, which I believe the original one was a 40 by 20. This one is a 40 by 40 extrusion. There's this knob that sits on top of the extruder and there is little PTFE clips that go in the connectors for the Bowden tube. Now that's the bits that you can see. We'll go into detail in some of that in a sec. There's a lot you can't see and that is the power supply itself has been upgraded to a Meanwell brand name power supply. The board has been upgraded and according to Creality, it's their own design board. It also has the silent stepper drivers fitted to X and Y. Now what you won't see is auto leveling or a run out sensor. And in my opinion, that's a good thing because I don't see those as necessary, especially on a print of this size. Now let's have a look in a little bit more detail here. The power supply is, in my opinion, a great move, so to speak, pardon the pun. It's been moved underneath and out of the way where little fingers can't get near it and it makes a much tidier machine. The LCD, yeah, well, I spent a bit of time poking the screen on the LCD. No, I didn't really. It is a color LCD, which you would expect was a touch screen, but in fact it's not. You still have to use the knob on the bottom and click it and turn it to get to the various things on the menus. I quite like it actually. I think it's more user friendly than some of the touch screens I've seen. The 
parts drawer. Yep, that's a little beauty. I thought it was unnecessary until I started using it and putting the tools in it. And yeah, it's good. The leveling knobs, yep, very handy. The glass surface, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. The frame, yep, nice and sturdy. The uh, hot end is a little bit different in that it has a more stylish cover over it. Looks like it's blow molded. And it has a boot on the heat block and the nozzle to keep that nice and warm. And the other things, the extruder knob and the clips, well, if you go onto Thingiverse or some of the forums, most of the things you can see here are upgrades that owners of the original Ender 3 have printed and put on their original printers. So a lot of this is stuff that, okay, Creality have looked at all of this stuff, seen what the users have wanted and added it as standard. Now, this is, this is a good thing. I quite like the idea, but there's a couple of them that I don't see as necessary. The belt tensioners, which you can see on X and Y, I really don't see those as necessary. It just gives something else for newbies to fiddle with. If the belts are set up properly and have been tightened to the correct tension, you really shouldn't need to have to touch them regularly anyway. Maybe once a year you'd need to check them and, and tension them because the belts themselves are good quality belts. They're not going to stretch or anything like that. So yeah, don't see them as really that necessary, but I guess a lot of people did. That's why they did it as an upgrade on the um, Thingiverse print yourself stuff. But anyway, that's my opinion. The glass bed, great idea. I love glass beds. There was a little bit of concern in the early printers that there was a slight dip in the middle of the glass bed. Now, mine, the one that I have here, does have a slight dip in the center. It's not enough to create adhesion problems, but it is noticeable. It's livable, it's not, a, not that big a problem. And I've been told that they've addressed this and the, the newer ones have a, a better flat glass bed. The knob on the extruder, well, it's, it's meant to be there to be able to wind the filament through the extruder for loading and unloading, but I don't see the point in that. It has a spring-loaded lever that you can take the tension off and push the filament in and out. But I do see it as an advantage in a telltale for the actual extruder motor. You can see that it's running smoothly. You can see when it does a retraction. Uh, and you can also see if it starts skipping or missing steps. It's a very visual way of, of being able to tell when it's not doing the right thing. So I like that. That's really good. What else can we tell you about it? It's Basically the same machine, size-wise, print bed size. Everything else is pretty similar. Uh, and if you know the original Ender 3, you'll know that it's really bulletproof. The, the Ender 3 has always been a really nice printer. It's one that I know a lot of people have set up in their print farms and have multiple machines running and it is a good, reliable, easy to use first printer. Now there's, as I said, a few things on there that I like, which I've been through. There are a couple of things that I don't like, uh, aside from the belt tensioners, which I think are unnecessary. I don't like the filament holder, spool holder, mounted on top of the printer. It's something that I've never liked on any printer. So, I'd be putting the filament on a separate uh, mounting spool holder uh, down at bench level. Yeah, it makes a, the footprint bigger, but I don't know. It's got to amplify any vibrations or movement when it sits up so high like that. 
Now, the big one, the big one that I don't like or I don't understand is they've gone to a huge amount of trouble and expense to make this thing really, really quiet. The actual printing process of the steppers and the extruders and the movement of everything is beautiful and smooth, buttery smooth in fact, and really, really quiet. You can hardly hear it running. But the fans drive me crazy. The extruder fan, the print part fan, and especially the power supply fan are really, really loud. Now, if they really wanted to do something about making the printer quieter, surely they could put better fans in those places so that the quietness could be an overall quietness, not just the steppers. One other thing that I really have a problem with is the part cooling fan, only on one side of the nozzle. Now, because of this, overhangs on the other side of the print, away from the cooling fan, can be a problem. I would really have liked to have seen two part cooling fans, one on either side of the nozzle, or at least a duct that ducts the air to both sides of the nozzle would, would certainly make for better prints, I believe, and probably a more powerful fan as well. So that's it, the Ender 3 V2. Still an outstanding printer, still the best value for money on the market at the moment, and one that I would highly recommend. Now I'm going to run through some prints at the end here, and just show you what it's capable of. These are some of the test prints that I've done on the new Ender 3 V2. Now there's a variety of prints here. This little dog is one that was on the SD card. And the rest are models, or well, they're all from Thingiverse, so I'm not gonna go through the where to find the files, they're all on there. Now the print quality that we're getting out of this printer is really, really nice. It's as good as any entry level printer that, that I've ever seen. It's just fantastic. Now you'll notice that there's multiples of benches. When I'm testing a printer, I also run it with different uh, slicer programs. So, so that we get a good idea of how the printer can handle different slices. For instance, that was Simplify 3D, uh, that was Cura, and this was Kiss. And it, it's just perfect. It just prints perfectly. Some of these prints are just, they're just, well, perfect. Now these are all PLA, these prints. They're all Ararum. PLA, which is an Australian company, link in the description, who are a big supporter of this channel. They supply all the filament that we use for reviews. Now, this one here, this little Cali Cat, that's in Pet G, Arara and Pet G, and that is just perfect. Cannot fault it. And this vase also is Ararum Pet G in vase mode, naturally. And yeah, the, the printer just does an amazing job with all of these prints. The cat that's a favorite of some, um, this one in particular is a nice model and it's just brilliant. Most of these were printed at either 0.2 or 0.16 layer height at 50 to 60 millimeters a second. So we weren't mucking around. It's printed at normal speeds that uh, any normal person would use. They weren't done specially just to show you. Now there's one other print which I'll show you in just a sec. Okay, I lied. Two other prints. This first one, again, was on Thingiverse. 
It's the Chinese dragon holding a power pearl. This was printed at 0.2 layer height in, again, Ararum, but in their new filament, this is Ararum PPLA silk. Now, I've got to say that this model and this print are just beautiful. I'll just zoom in a little for you so that you can see a bit more detail there. It is just magnificent. I love it to death. As a print and as a filament and as a printer, it is just gorgeous. Did I use that word? Jeez, it is magnificent, put it that way. Okay, now there's one other that I wanna show you. Okay, this one is a Hex 3D Jeffro model. So you won't find this one on Thingiverse. It's the only one that you won't find. But again, this is in PPLA from Ararum in their silk. And it is just magnificent. So there's two things I love about this. I love the printer that was sent to us from Creality, by the way, thanks to the people at Creality for sending us the printer and the filament. Okay, that's all I've got for you for this one. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye.